Wow, we're in Rwanda. <laughs> <laughs> the first difference we notice in Rwanda is that over here, there's maximum one passenger per motorbike, and it comes with a compulsory helmet. First some accommodation in Rwanda. It's a campsite, like next to the lake, and we've been going downhill for so long. We're not going back up today, at least. We came from up, 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 up there. After setting our tent, we're getting warm by the fire, enjoying the peacefulness of Lake Ruhondo. Waking up to these views is the reason we love camping so much. Bon appétit, Wood. Bon appétit. I wanted to say that we read the reviews saying the breakfast is really worth it. I didn't expect it. No, so it's worth it. incredible. He's been working for two hours to make this bread. Yes. Thank you, Amos. <laughs> Amos is a great host, and he even helped us to arrange a Syrian boat ride to the other side of the lake where we had lunch. In the afternoon, when we came back, he invited us to join him for a short hike in the area. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're too much in a way. <laughs> Our next stop is a nearby city, Musanze, where we were lucky to meet Eve on his way home from school. He offered to show us around his village and he also shared with us many interesting insights about Rwanda. Do you know why Rwanda is known as the cleanest African country? Last Saturday of each month, there is something happening all over Rwanda. What is yes. it exactly? Like it is community work, which is like Muganda in Kinyarwanda. Mm -hmm. The people who is 18 and above, they all meet at the same place. They see the, they see the problem, which is in the village. Maybe the house for the poor people who cannot get the money to build it again. Maybe the roads, maybe any other infrastructure, maybe the school. Yeah. So what's on the schedule next Saturday? Um, it depends on the region problem. You know, mm -hmm. like for us, it's roads. When rain is coming and then there is really, really like many water in the roads, then the car can't pass, you know, this is mostly rocky. Yeah. So what we do, we are like, uh, we are going to fix it. You know, we're going to put there some stones so there is no water which we will spare. His mom is a banana beer seller. So we bought two liters of banana beer and went to drink it at Eve's favorite spot. So it's really funny because uh, Eve, our, the guy we met today, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like he was telling us today that in school they're not allowed to have phones and also computers unless yeah. you're like studying computer science. And then like I get this bill of 500 francs and we see the kids with iPads. <laughs> <laughs> Probably they're studying IT. <laughs> it's really funny. Maybe I think they are from international schools or something. Because <laughs> you, can't, you can't find a kid in my school with this. It got dark, and Eve mentioned he knows a place where we could go, so we invite him for dinner. A buffet. What you getting? For me, you know, I like to eat a lot. I know, I know, I've heard. <laughs> Paul, you are wasting my money here. Why didn't you put more? I know, sorry. <laughs> This is how you're supposed to do all you can eat. <laughs> Not like this. Musanze is about 40 minutes away from Volcanoes National Park. We made it. <laughs> we woke up pretty pretty early today, mm -hmm. like 5.30. Uh, got here before 7, like 10 minutes before 7. And we asked if they have an available spot for the Golden Monkey Trek. That was our number one. The other option was Bisoke, which mm -hmm. is a pretty cool hike to the Crater Lake. And, uh, they have, <laughs> so we signed up for the Golden Monkeys and now we have like some free coffee and then a briefing with uh, all the tourists. There are so many cars. So many people, so many wow. Muzungus. And uh, one more mission for us is to find someone who will take us in their car because from the headquarters to the actual track of the monkeys, it's still about one hour. Yeah, it's still pretty far and we came with the motorbikes and it was so cold and now we're, they're waiting so we have to let them know what's up. Yeah. <laughs> What did you order, Lisa? Cappuccino. Cappuccino. I it before the hike. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many people. 
Our Golden Monkey group has about 15 people and one guide. The trek starts at the potato fields, from where we have a beautiful view on a Bisoke mountain, and continues through a bamboo forest. And the first animal we spot is not a monkey. Dry season. <laughs> so COVID came back just today. No jokes. Can you say it normally? <laughs> so when you trick the monkeys, you want to have a surgical mask to, <laughs> uh, because uh, just to avoid like the spread any disease with them, so, since we have such a similar DNA. Thanks to a brilliant team of trackers, it doesn't take too long to spot a big family of golden monkeys. From now on, we have exactly one hour in their proximity to observe them from a close distance without disturbing them. We were surprised how comfortable they were in our presence and overall they paid a very little attention to us. In Musanze, we are staying in a cute hostel slash art gallery where we challenged everyone to some table tennis. Bam! Coffee is ready. We are continuing our journey south, towards the borders with Congo, where we are invited to spend a couple of days with our friend Ismail and his family. They live near the Lake Kivu, and we spend our days in slow mode, visiting local markets, cooking meals together, and trying some local medicine. You cover yourself, then you sweat. So when you are sweating, the, that, when you are sweating, the germs can pass out through sweating. So after like 45 minutes, one hour, you start feeling relaxed in the head if you have a headache. Sniff, you haven't sniffed. Sniffing it so that it goes over the head. You sniff the, the air like this. Paul, are you sniffing? I'm sniffing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How is it? Ooh. Long time I didn't do this. <laughs> I used to do it when I was little. Same. Over onion soup. Onion. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. Better. Can you show us what you're doing? Ta da! <laughs> this is the magic. Eucalyptus leaves. And it smells like the Chinese yeah. medicine. The tiger balm. Yeah. Oh. So Hope it works. This is how you fight malaria. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to move forward, but we don't get too far as Paul is still feeling weak. Today I'm drinking non-alcoholic beer. <laughs> What's up? I'm fighting malaria. <laughs> it's not official official, but it feels like something pretty hard. And I keep uh, taking like paracetamol every four hours just to be alive. You keep taking anti-malarics and anti every day. But Our precious pills. Is the last day, so I don't know what happens tomorrow. Hope to be fine. So we are on a beautiful Lake Kivu where we spent past four days, but we haven't had the chance to explore it so much yet, because <laughs> there are like times when you plan your trip and you're excited, but you never can plan for when you're gonna get sick. Yes, <laughs> four days ago I started uh, being kind of tired in the transportation in the bus and were invited with our friend Ismail and uh, I was telling him my symptoms, I was uh, feeling like some fever, I was hot, then I was shivering. He was like, whoa, like, this looks like malaria and uh, in the area it's super common. And so like, I kind of trusted him and because I knew it developed very quickly, I took right away the treatment that we carry with us, like some malarone. And, uh, and actually, like the next day, we went to the hospital and it turned out my test for uh, malaria was negative. But seeing with the doctor, it turns out it might be possible that uh, like I still had it. But because I took the treatment, like so quickly. Yeah, it turned out negative. And uh, actually, Ismail also did a, a eucalyptus infusion for me. So he just like took eucalyptus leaves, put it in a pan, we boiled it. And then I was like under steaming. this blanket. So, yeah, steaming. Paul was taking... Yeah, he was taking good care of you. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, it worked a bit, it worked a bit for some time. And uh, and so for the last uh, yeah four days, uh, we were very slow. We slowed down. We stayed at the hotel. I was mostly in bed, like super chill. And uh, yeah, after three days, almost exactly, I'm, I'm back on track. And that's what makes me believe that it was malaria, because they, they say like it lasts usually three days. 
and, uh, and from one day to another I'm back so yeah probably this, this was is it the first experience <laughs> and uh, we are ready to explore more now <laughs> fully recharged we are excited to hit the road again heading to a very special place but first rice and beans our go-to food on our travels through Africa after a scenic ride full of serpentines, we are setting our tent for a few days in Nyungwe National Park. <laughs> We're stealing the mattresses of the, of the tent <laughs> because it's so cold and it's so ridiculous. Like our tent is so small, so we're going to try to fit the second mattress inside. Not sure if it's going to work. Sorry Nyungwe for this. Like, really, wait, sorry. This place is stunning, and our camp is in the middle of wilderness, full of monkeys and other animals. But it seems like we will have to cut our stay short. I kept saying yesterday, oh, I'm so happy, I feel fine, it's my for sure, it's over. And I had a terrible night, like super hard, like hard day. So I think we're going to Kigali like today to really get some proper like analysis. Mm to be updated but no one is dying so far we don't want to leave this place without taking a hike even if it's just a small one so the guides recommend to sign up for a canopy walk that's one of the easiest walks in the forest our guide team is very knowledgeable and is making our experience even cooler as he's sharing with us many interesting facts about the fauna and flora of this rainforest we learned that elephants once used to live here, and Rwanda is planning to reintroduce them here in the near future. Not as impressive as elephants, but still very interesting to us are ants that we spot on our way to the suspension bridge. We're on the canopy walk in Nyongwe National Park. It's amazing. We have a beautiful view on the forest. We're 70 meters above like the ground and we can see like the monkeys eating the fruit on the top of the trees it's very unique yeah really don't miss it out if you come to Rwanda this is a must <laughs> thank you guys this small hike was a perfect introduction to Nyongwe a place that stays on our list for our next visit to Rwanda oh, you could see the canopy walk from here yeah <laughs> So this is what we did uh, this morning, it's uh, around 2 hours, depending on how fast you are going. We are going pretty slowly because Paul is still feeling sick and unfortunately that's the only hike we are able to do at the moment uh, because of the health condition, otherwise we would stay here for at least 3 days. It's amazing all the possibilities that you have in this forest. The guides told us that there is a hike that it's quite new and it lasts for three days so you can go hiking in a forest for three days with like food and accommodation provided on each stop which is something that I would definitely be in if we have more time and if we are fully fully fit and healthy so more reasons to come back A long and exhausting drive from Nyungwe to Kigali is ahead of us and Paul especially is at the end of his energy In the capital, we are booking a nice Airbnb for a week, where Paul can fully recover from whatever disease he was fighting with. We enjoy slowing down, cooking for ourselves, playing board games, and hanging out with friends we met earlier on our trip. We're in the middle of Kigali, and there is this golf in the middle of the city, and you have like this track to run or just walk around like in greenery. It's a good idea. It's super nice, like so far, very green and very modern people playing golf people running we spotted this art piece from the bottom and finally we climbed up to check it out looks like an art gallery this colorful gallery was full of interesting modern art of contemporary african artists from there we're taking a ride to the genocide memorial so one thing you cannot miss when you visit Kigali is the Genocide Memorial. So here we, we are. We are very interested in the history of Rwanda, especially after seeing a movie, Hotel Rwanda. Yeah. Which that's... everyone should watch. <laughs> so let's see what this is about. Let's go.
Yeah, tough. We knew it was going to be intense, but it really is. Like They do a great job explaining with pictures, with videos, testimonies. And uh, I, I found it really interesting that the last part of the exhibition is actually about other genocides, what genocide is and uh, how we can avoid it as a society. And uh, one thing that stood out is that people always, like societies, are very slow to react. So it's something to think about. After this visit, we need to lift our mood. Paul, where are we going? The Neil Collin Hotel for a cocktail and to... Are you dressed properly? <laughs> yeah, <I'm> today. <laughs> this hotel played a key role during the genocide in 1994, offering a refuge to many. The movie Hotel Rwanda is inspired by this story. One thing we noticed in Kigali is the number of bars the city has. Not the kind you imagine, but milk bars. And it's about time we visit one. Only thing on top here is milk. <laughs> we try to walk almost everywhere around the city, thanks to which we discover many cute streets and opened art zones. Such an angel. High five, babe. Rwanda is nicknamed to be a country of thousand hills. It's capital, it's no exception, it's extremely hilly, but super green and beautiful uh, at night as well, like there are so many hills, so you have almost from any point a huge panorama with uh, many lights, it's very beautiful and it could be our favorite city, it's very close with Nairobi, um, Nairobi is very green as well, but the traffic is really terrible and here in Kigali really it's smooth it's not uh, too much. There are streets that are completely silent and peaceful and it's, it feels much more pleasurable to be walking on the streets of Kigali compared to Nairobi. It is great to see Kigali's lively city centre that has a car-free zone. And it is great to see Paul healthy again and full of energy. Well, maybe a bit too much energy. For our last night in Kigali, we decided to do something we haven't done in a long time. Mezza Malonga is a renowned Afrofusion restaurant offering high gastronomy. And that sounds even more appealing to us after spending our last five months eating mostly street food. It looks delicious. We are extremely impressed with not only the taste, but also the presentation and story behind each course. It's good. <laughs> we just discovered it's actually 10 course meal. And a bit more expensive than what we thought. <laughs> <laughs> Meza Malonga is an intimate space with only few tables, featuring an open kitchen so you can observe the chef and his team from up close. It was the best possible goodbye to our 20-day visit of this amazing little country. Thanks for watching! Bye-bye!